I'm quite excited to show you what I've been working on. This is purely from a Power Platform perspective and people who have been working with Power Platform, they already know what PowerFX is, but I will introduce you to some, some interesting things about that. So who am I? I'm a, I'm, my name is Ishar Prakash. I live in a place called uh, Yorkshire in the UK. I'm a technical development lead at Resonate UCC here. Um, I have quite a lot of uh, interest in, in IoT, Power Platform, and programming in general, which probably explains why I have embarked on this um, um, journey on trying to bring all of these together, as you'll see in the presentation. So what is this about? So I'm going to be talking about IoT today, right? Uh, and uh, it is challenging um, if anyone has ever tried to do a bit of IoT, it's challenging. And the biggest challenge, I believe, is skills required to write software for the hardware devices that become a part of your circuit, right? Um, so not all of us are able to do that uh, con um, you know, conveniently and, uh, and easily, but we are okay to write local apps. You know, uh, people who have been doing PowerFX uh, know that it's, it's pretty easy to build apps using local languages like that. A PowerFX is obviously the, uh, the uh, you know, de facto local uh, programming language at the moment. So the question in my mind at that point of time was, can I somehow bring all of this together, right? What helped me a lot uh, was Microsoft open sourcing PowerFX language and an example Im implementation for that language as well. With that, it became easier for me to sort of design PyFlows. Um, I had some major goals I had set, put together for myself, uh, which I wanted to meet, right, uh, in, the, in the first release itself, which is that that whatever app I'm building should be able to leverage existing citizen developer skills. And it should also be able to interface with Power Platform services like, you know, Canvas apps and Dataverse and all that. It should be cross-platform. Um, the reason is that, you know, it's not just a fact that the app should should uh, should run on a, on a local PC. It should be able to run on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. So it obviously need to support Linux. Um, the, the, the final, uh, and which was very important to me was it should be very simple to use. It should not be, you know, jargon filled with uh, hardware, you know, uh, language, et cetera. So that was my, my primary, those were my primary goals. So the way I started thinking about this was, uh, I put together a rough define re design, as you can see, um, the biggest part of the design, being able to design the circuit, uh, and it could be more than one, and the system in the comfort of your own home computer, which means if you are a IoT enthusiast, if you're a home automation automation, um, you know, enthusiast, you should be able to put together uh, the, the app or the, or the program as easy as putting together, you know, um, you know, a bunch of circuits together, which you have helped from, from many other, uh, many organizations these days selling Pi, Pi, Raspberry Pi kits and all that, right? But one of the other aspects of that was that it should be, it should be accessible securely from external services like, uh, you know, Canvas apps and Power Platform and all that. So all of this was in my mind when I was designing it. So I went a little bit more deeper and I started working through what is possible, you know, what is available, et cetera. So the design, if you like, is pretty straightforward. It's a straightforward web app, uh, which runs on premise. It's got a little internal API, which, which understands PowerFX, you know, language a bit. It also needed a little storage, uh, SQLite, simply because of the fact that, like I said, I would like, I would like this app to be running on single board computers, which which are low power computers, and we cannot be running SQL Server and all those you know uh, massive uh, databases. Um, the other thing was that it should we should when they are designing this circuit, we did not it it should not be a requirement that that the all the entire system should be connected to uh, to to the internet. So so basically that was my that was my first goal from the with the on premise side of things on the on the cloud service side of things, we can build custom connectors. It's pretty easy to build custom connectors and, you know, uh, and deploy it to your, your environment. So, but then how do you bring them together? So I thought, well, punching holes into firewall, home firewall, not great. So what I decided was that I should use something like 
Azure Relay hybrid connections. If you have worked with on-premise data gateway, you probably are aware of how that kind of thing works in the sense that, you know, you deploy, a, your app works uh, on, on premise. It is able to connect out to the network, not connect in, and, and then it can receive messages from, from uh, external services. So that was the, that was the idea. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm rushing through this because I wanted to show you the demo, which is, um, uh, which is the most exciting part of this. So I've got a demo where I, I'm calling two circuit demo and uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's like two Raspberry Pis basically, you know, controlling different, different devices. And I just want to see how we can use our app to connect them together and work with them. Right. So let me quickly switch to uh, that. So this, what you see here is this, what I call the, the studio, the, the studio is basically where you design your Pi flow. Now you probably see this very close to, I mean, this is using Fluent UI, as you can see, it's using um, React, uh, which, uh, which you, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of you are aware of because you've been working on SPFX, et cetera. So the, the goal here is to make it as simple for, uh, as possible for people to basically set up flows I'm calling it flows, um, you know, um, uh, but I didn't find a better word to use there. But a flow basically is a something like a a, a bit of a code that reacts to things happening outside. For example, if um, if someone presses a button or if if they if a web request comes through from say for example a a a canvas app, you know, how what should it react to? The most important element of is not this. I mean, this obviously is is typical thing. Is this one? This is using PowerFX, um, the language that we use in Canvas apps. So with PowerFX, you, you get to use all the usual things that comes with PowerFX, you know, all the, the typical things. For example, here, here you can see the, the usage of Boolean, you can see the, the, the check, the if condition, et cetera. But the great thing about the open source PowerFX library is that we are able to write our own function. For example, write bin is not something that we'll find in Canvas app, but it is there in PyFlows because we need to be able to control pins or rather, you know, connections with the, in your in your devices, etc. So what you see on the on the right side of the screen is actually a very simple experiment, right? So you've got a Raspberry Pi that's got that's connected to to a to a button and a, and a light, and you've got a motor connected to another Raspberry Pi. So there there is no Direct interaction between them. The only way they interact is through our our PyFlow Studio. So what? Let, let me explain what I mean. So if I press that button, obviously the light switch is on, and uh, and the, the motor is running. As you can see, you probably are not able to hear the motor running. It's very very um, very silent. But what I'm going to do though is I'm going to turn on this flow. I mean, a flow can be turned on or turned off. So I'm going to turn on this flow. Now this flow is it it adds a little bit of functionality. What it means is that when you press that button. We want the, the LED to switch on and off. In the earlier, in the early when I was running it earlier, you you saw that the LED was not switching on and off; it was just steady on. But with with that in, little addition to our flow, uh, to to our circuit design, we are able to flash that. So that kind of of configuration is possible, and it can be done without knowing anything about C plus plus or Python or you know, and all those phenomenal things. Now, one other bit that I wanted to show you while we are doing this is the fact that we are able to control the same circuit from externally. So the, I've got, a, I've got a, I was testing it with uh, Postman before, but you can see that it's just like an API, an API that you can use where you can send, send messages to it and our PyFlow app can react to that and, and do things with it. Let me switch this off first. What I'm going to do, though, I'm not going to run the the Postman set of things, but I'm going to interact it with using Power Pack, a Canvas app. So here is a Canvas app. The Canvas has has been designed in such a way that it uses a custom connector to interact with our Pi Flow. So I'm going to switch that on from my Canvas app, and you can see that it's running. I've got three speeds on, so I can reduce the speed, and I can reduce the speed further, and I can also stop. So this is Canvas app interacting with our Pi flows using our Azure Relay hybrid connections with a custom connector in the middle. So that is a quick, very quick overview of what is happening with the app. So let me let me quickly go back. I need to finish off with a with a, a few notes. Um, I've got some future plans for it. I, I want to support what what I call devices. Devices are like encapsulations of complicated circuits. Uh, which you can read and write from, and you should be able to read and write from just like you would read and write from a control on a on a canvas app, like a button or a, or a text box, right? Um, I also want 
want to support bring in Power Platform connectors directly into the app, which means that from the app, you should be able to use PowerFX to interact with, say, Dataverse or uh, or an, another Azure service. I also want to add support for Pi, Pico, and Arduino, which these are microcontrollers. These are not single board computers. A hundred times more complicated to to build something for a for a microcontroller, but I am I am on it. Um, then the final thing that I want to do is to release that entire source code to to the community so that we can build on top of that and we can we can make we can make sure that citizen developers do not miss out on the fun of home automation simply because they are because you know it's inaccessible to them because of their uh, you know programming lack of programming language skills or experience right um, finally after all of this uh, a quick set of acknowledgments a big shout out to Mike Stoll uh, who is a PowerFX architect at, at Microsoft. He has helped me understand some of the nuances of the library as, and how PowerFX works. So I had a, quite a lot of detailed conversations with him on certain aspects of it, and he has helped me do some interesting things with it. Um, and that helped me build out, build up on the existing code base so, so that it supports you know, IoT related things. And obviously a bunch of things. I'm a Linux fan, as you can see, I, I, I love Linux, so, so I do my development on Linux. However, what I want you to look at is the fact that I'm able to use every single open source tool. I can, I don't, I, I'm not restricted to a particular platform. I can use any platform I want to, to build it. So that is the power of open source. That's the power of, you know, .NET and, and uh, React and Visual Studio Code, basically. So that's basically me, a quick run through of what I have, I've, I've, I've done. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in a community calls forum. I'm also going to post a link to download the pre-built versions of this app. You know, we, you will start seeing the source code come up, uh, you know, as soon as I'm done, I've, as soon as I have documented it and all that kind of stuff. But for now, you, if you want to play around with it, if you're an IoT enthusiast, please do not hesitate to, to download it and play with it. And, and of, of course, I'm always available on, on chat and uh, you know, I even have a YouTube channel, so you can always contact me whenever. So that's it. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, back to you, David. Awesome stuff, my man. I mean, really phenomenal. Uh, the the ch <laughs> the chat is just blowing up. So, in the interest of time, we do have to move on. But as he had mentioned, we will have a dedicated forum post for you to communicate and collaborate with them. Um, well done. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you for sharing this. Very very cool stuff.